C of 3. That's the same thing as, you know, the guy in the truck throwing the baseball, right? And, and, and uh, it, it, by all appearances so far, the stuff in the red and blue box is the same thing for acceleration. You take basically the acceleration, say, of the truck, or link 2, okay, below the point P2 below P3, and then you take the apparent acceleration of point P3 relative with respect to 2, that's the speed of the baseball with respect to the truck, and if you just add them, then you get the full acceleration of P3 is what you would hope to get, where the only trick is, you know, of course, there's the expected normal tangential component, right? But, uh-oh, we have this other term that's very confusing in here, this 2 omega cross VP3 with respect to 2. Um, and it says C up here, and that's because that is the Coriolis uh, acceleration, okay? So this is where acceleration gets really confusing. Not only does acceleration of a point have a, you know, an, uh, really all these things have a tangential and a normal component, a centripetal and a tangential component, but when you start getting into apparent stuff where you've got links moving on top of other links, now you have a Coriolis term that's added to it to just complicate things more. Okay, and you just got to remember it's 2 times omega, which is the absolute angular velocity of the link that the thing's riding on, so 2 in this case, cross the velocity vector of P3, that's the apparent velocity vector relative with respect to 2, so VP3 slash 2. Okay? And the thing that's crazy about the Coriolis acceleration is, you know, there's a global or like a, a, an absolute velocity in there, but an apparent velocity, so it uses both. This is, this is kind of comes from that other crazy term I, I, I alluded to last time. Um, and uh, note that this acceleration is not sensed by an observer attached to link 2. Okay, so if you're an ant attached to link 2, you don't know anything about omega, so you're not going to sense it, you're not going to know, you're not going to feel it, but it, it will definitely be there, right? So um, Coriolis is kind of the reason, uh, you know, like we're, we're all ants attached to the Earth, and the Earth is spinning through space, rotating about its axis, rotating around the sun, you know, rotating around... Uh, the center of the galaxy and everything. And so there's definitely a, 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 an absolute angular velocity, but then the velocity relative with respect to the Earth of things moving on it, VP3, um, when you have both those components, you create this Coriolis acceleration. And this is like, you know, uh, uh, hurricanes and tornadoes, why they uh, kind of rotate different directions in the different uh, hemispheres. Um, uh, it, it largely because of the Coriolis uh, effect, or you know, when you go to museums and you have the pendulum swinging, knocking down, uh, uh, you know, pins in, in some of these museums, it's, it's largely from uh, Coriolis stuff. The fact that the Earth is rotating and we have this apparent thing, but we don't sense it because we're we're stuck to the Earth. But it's it's there, right? So, okay, there's there's a great video you can watch about this. But imagine you're you're you know you're this rotating table and you've got this slot cut in it, and here's this body moving up and down um, in this, uh, at least in this instance, moving up, and this is rotating this direction with respect to the ground. Um, the Coriolis would be, um, right, the, uh, that o two times that omega cross this velocity, and uh, you would get um, a, uh, right, this cross that, you'd get kind of a, a Coriolis acceleration in this direction, which makes sense because it would have to be you know, it's, it's right in the slot, so there's an acceleration kind of pushing that in that, that direction. So um, if, if that was really confusing, we're going to do an example in just, uh, just one second here. Okay, that's, that's very similar to this, okay? And hopefully it'll hammer out all confusion with, with Coriolis. But go ahead and uh, click on this YouTube video and, and check it out. Uh, and just, you know, Google a bunch of stuff about Coriolis. It's, it's, it's a cool acceleration, okay? Okay, so let's look at this example. Like I said, it's kind of similar to what I just showed you. Um, but I slaughtered in my explanation, but this will make it much more clear. Okay, so, so say you have a mechanism, you got link two and link three is sliding on link two. It can, you know, it's, it's kind of, this is sliding, a prism joint, and this is rotating around this pin here. Okay, for the mechanism the position illustrated, so at this very instant when this is 45 degrees, okay, block three is sliding outward on link two at a uniform rate of three meters per second. Okay. Okay, so relative with respect to 2, it's sliding out at 30 millimeters per second. While link 2 is rotating at a constant angular velocity of 50 radians per second counterclockwise. Okay, so this guy's rotating with this omega 2 that they just gave us. And again, you know, 50 radians per second. But again, it's doing this at a constant angular velocity, which means alpha 2 is 0. So they've given us everything we need. 
they've given us the position, theta 2, they've given us omega 2, and they've given us alpha 2, which is 0, right, by their, their language. Okay, we also have the apparent velocity of this, because I said relative with respect to 2, this is sliding out at uh, 30 meters per second, okay? The question is, determine the angular, uh, sorry, determine the acceleration of point A of the sliding block, okay? So if A is attached to 3, what, what is that A? Okay, well, um, we can use the acceleration difference stuff to march uh, from this point to the point A that's on link 2, so A2, which is directly coincident uh, to, to, to uh, A3. So, so again, first of all, before I go even further, just anytime you see some body sliding or, or being fixed to another body that's rotating, uh, you know, think apparent uh, acceleration, and you're probably going to use this apparent acceleration equation I just showed you. Okay, so that, that's one trigger, and, and you're seeing two different bodies, three and two, where there's two points that are on each body, uh, but they're coincidence. So there's A2 and A3, okay? Okay, so let's find A, A2 first, the acceleration of A2. So pretend the block's not even there, and uh, we've just got a point A2 on link 2. And we're going to do acceleration difference equation to march from there to there to find the acceleration of A2. Well, the acceleration of A02 here is zero because it's fixed. It's not accelerating, so you see I canceled it. And then there's two normal components, AN A202 and AT A202, okay? Well, what is AN? Well, remember, AN would be omega 2 cross um, RA202, it points from O2 to A2, omega cross that. And then you take omega again and cross that result, and so you get an a n that points in that direction that has the magnitude of omega 2 squared r a o uh, r a 2 o 2. Okay, so it points in that direction, it's that, and that's the normal component, okay? Well, you see I already crossed out the a t, okay? Um, and the reason for that is because uh, to get a t a 2 o 2, or in other words, the tangential acceleration of a um, uh, 2, right, the point A on 2 that's going in this direction because you know, it's rotating on that, so that, that's the tangential direction, would have been alpha 2 cross this vector of the points from there to there. But alpha 2 is 0, and so we, we cancel this out. So really, the acceleration of, of point A2 below this block is really just this, and it points in that direction. Okay, so we just did acceleration difference equation stuff to march from this point to point A2 below A3. But now we want to find, you know, what, what they asked for is the acceleration of A3, essentially, uh, point A on uh, 3. Okay, so to do that, uh, now that we're, we're moving from, uh, you know, two bodies with two different points, one on each body that are coincident, we're going from A2 to A3, we need to use the apparent acceleration equation. Okay, which has, you know, the, the acceleration of A2 plus the Coriolis term plus then the apparent acceleration, which has the normal and tangential term. Okay, which is the equation we spent forever deriving. So, you know, to get from O2 to A2, we did the, the acceleration difference equation. Now, for, to get from A2 to A3, we're going to use the apparent stuff. Okay? Okay, well, we've already solved A2. It's all this. We plug it in there. Okay, and now... Uh, let's do the Coriolis stuff, okay, which is 2 omega 2 cross VA3 2. Of course, omega 2 and VA3 slash 2 are perpendicular. You know, VA3 is going this way, and they gave it to us. It's 50, um, or sorry, 30 meters per second, and it's going this way. It's relative respect. If you're an ant on 2, it's not moving. This guy would be moving at 30 meters per second. And so you take that and times it by omega 2, which is 50 radians per second, times 2. Um, and since they're perpendicular, the cross product didn't do anything. Okay. So that's the magnitude of it. But what direction is that? Well, remember, it was omega coming out at you cross VA, which is there. So it would be in that direction. That's the Coriolis acceleration that uses both the, angular the absolute angular velocity of link 2 as well as the apparent linear velocity of link 3. Okay, and it points in that direction. Okay, but now we have to determine these. What is this one, the normal component, uh, the apparent normal component? So now we're just looking at, like, if you're an Anton 2, 
and you're just moving with 30 meters per second, what is the normal component of that? Well, normally it would be that speed, which is 30 meters per second squared, divided by radius, but this is moving a straight line. You know, if you're an ant on this, this isn't even moving. It's just a block moving on a straight line. So its radius of curvature is infinite. And if you take any number divided by infinite, this is zero. So this term cancels out. And then what's the angular acceleration there, the apparent angular acceleration? Well, it, I told you it's moving at a constant, oh, it says right here, at a uniform rate of 30 meters per second. So look for the words constant and uniform. If it's a uniform rate, that means that apparent velocity uh, the derivative of that apparent velocity is, is just zero. So the apparent you know, tangential acceleration, this guy, the acceleration of A3 with respect to 2, in the direction of the path, the tangent path, is zero. Okay, so this cancels, this cancels, so all you really have is this plus this, or which is that vector plus that vector, which points in that direction, and the answer is this. Now, be very careful, like the way I did it was I gave you the directions and I gave you the magnitudes, and you just have to make sure you get the components and add them correctly and make sure you get the, you know, um, I mean, in this case, you'd want to square them, add them, and square root it to find the magnitude of this because they're perpendicular there. Um, but just, you know, make sure these, these are vectors. Make sure you, you work with them correctly, okay? Okay, if you understand this example, you're, you're doing really well, okay? Um, if you don't, you're going to eventually internalize this. Um, you remember this, like, chart from topic uh, three, we had a similar topic for um, acceleration, or sorry, for velocity. Um, and uh, now we're going to apply it to acceleration, okay? So um, for the case where uh, you have just one body and two points, but they're coincident on the same body, that's very trivial, okay? This is a trivial case. Uh, P and Q are like on top of each other. The acceleration of P is the acceleration of Q. It's the same thing with velocity. Okay, that one's obvious, okay? But now let's go over, say you have on the same body, but the two points are separated. So the same body, say it's body two, and Q and P are in different points on there. Well, that's the um, velocity, or sorry, the acceleration difference equation. And what that is, is you, you have the acceleration of Q, and now you add it to a normal component and a tangential component, where the normal component is this, it's the centripetal component, Here's the tangential component. So you can march from Q to P, and now you have the velocity of P. So that's how you move from two different points on the same body with acceleration. It's, the same, it's analogous to the velocity difference equation, except you know, there's the normal and tangential component. Okay? okay, but now let's say we have two points that are coincident, but they're on different bodies. So here's body two, body three. This guy's right in here and you've got P2 is a different point on 2 and P3 is a different point on 3, but they're coincident. Anytime you have that scenario, you're going to use all this apparent acceleration stuff, okay, that I, I taught you. And all you really need to memorize is it's the acceleration of the, bot, of the point P2 underneath on 2 plus the Coriolis thing plus the apparent uh, accelerations of P3 with respect to 2. So if you're an ant on 2 and nothing's moving with respect to 2, uh, but 3 is moving, you use the normal and tangential thing. And look, here's the Coriolis written out, and here is these terms written out. Okay, there's the normal, uh, and there's the tangential. Or that's the centripetal, apparent, and this is all apparent stuff. Okay, okay, but now it's like, well, what if we have uh, separated points? Say we have two different bodies, two and three, and we've got separated points, uh, P and Q. Well, what you do is you march from P. You'd use this to march from Q to this point on two. And then you use, to go from that point on 2 to this same point on 3, you'd use this to find the point on 3, and then you'd go back to using this to go from there to there. So you can see how you could march all around mechanisms and find both the positions, the velocities, and accelerations, okay? Okay, and with that, you have just concluded the most complex math, you know, I ever teach, um, and is, is really a mouthful and difficult to teach. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd really like you to internalize this Go back, look at the proofs many, many times, do, do examples, and uh, make sure you're understanding uh, absolutes and apparent and relative velocities and, and accelerations and where these terms are coming from and how to use them. We'll, we'll do more examples, but everything's kind of downhill from here in the course. We're going to move on to this, this point, but I'm going to take just a quick break here.